So if you don't know me, my name is Ellen. I look after partner communications here at 3CX. And we've been doing a little bit of a marketing series over the past few weeks. And today we are carrying that on with our social media for beginners website. That website, obviously it's late in the day for me, um, presentation. So thank you all for joining me. And to kick things off, I'm just going to kind of talk to you a little bit about why social media is so important. And you can see some of the stats there on the screen, kind of really bringing this home. So an incredible 3.5 billion people around the world are using social media. And that's actually about 45% of the world's population. So when people ask me if they should be on social media, I absolutely say yes, because imagine you could have a marketing billboard that reached 45% of the world's population, I don't think I'd find any of you saying no. So in itself, just the sheer number of people that are on social means that you should be too. And when we are there, um, we spend a lot of our time online. So the average social media use um, nowadays is about two and a half hours a day. That is literally almost 10% of our day. And we might argue that that's too much, but for us as kind of marketers, it's a really good opportunity to get kind of our products and services out in front of people. And another reason it's really important is because it really does influence people's purchasing decisions. So 78% of social media users actually say that they make purchases based on the brands or the businesses that they follow online. So if you can get them to follow you, then you're much more likely to see that turn into a sale um, later on. Now, there are a number of um, uses of social media, but I've listed kind of the six common ones on the screen in front of us. So um, one really brilliant use is to drive traffic to your site or another channel. So this is where your content sharing comes in. Um, it's where you kind of notify customers of potential events that you could be running, engage interest for those events. And that all helps, obviously, to connect you with your customers um, and get them really engaged in what you're doing and what you offer. You can also use social media to build contacts. So by design, um, social was um, made for networking, essentially, and it's all about relationships. So it is a great way for your sales teams to start kind of building connections and contacts that can turn into kind of fruitful sales opportunities further down the line. Um, also, brilliant if you don't want to do as much cold calling. So if you're a bit fearful of the phone, um, social selling is kind of overtaking cold calling as the way forward. So I think there'll be lots of sales reps that are kind of rejoicing quietly. You can also use it to assist your customers. And this is an increasingly um, common use of social media, actually. So that's where you use services like 3CX's um, Click to Talk to actually solve customer queries and complaints directly on your social media rather than making them go to another platform. Generally speaking, social will help you to build your brand as well because it portrays your values in a very real light. So every interaction that you have on social is visible. So people get a really good sense of kind of who you are as a company and whether they would like to do business with you based on your values and the way that you interact. Number five is PR and crisis management. So we've all been there where we've had a bit of a mishap. Um, it could be that internet connectivity went down. Um, it might be that you just made a bit of a marketing blunder that you need to say sorry for. But because social is such an authentic channel, um, some of the research has actually said that if you go onto your social media accounts and hold your hands up um, for making a mistake, not only does it increase the loyalty of your customers or your existing customers, it also makes prospects more willing to buy from you because they see you as an honest and authentic business. So um, a good use that might not be immediately obvious. And then six, we obviously have recruitment and kind of talent hunting. I know predominantly this is done on LinkedIn, um, but it is a really good use of social if you're not doing this already. And then because this is also important, I've broken it down into kind of four categories that we'll run through in more detail throughout the webinar. So to kick things off, I'm going to talk to you about building a social media strategy. We'll then talk about social listening and monitoring as kind of two techniques that you can use to help build your social media and inform the decisions that you make on your social accounts going forward. And this obviously has a direct impact on the uh, content that you produce. So 
once you know kind of what's happening in the world around you and in your industry, you're able to focus your content and make sure that it really resonates with customers at each stage of your marketing funnel. And then finally, I'm just going to finish up by kind of some good social etiquette. So tips for building relationships online, what to do and kind of what are the big no-nos because it is slightly different than other digital channels that we would have out there. Um, and I will pause as we're going through kind of towards the end of each section for any questions and hang around at the end for about 15 minutes or so to let you have the opportunity to ask them. So to kick things off, um, let's talk a little bit about your social media strategy. So just like you probably already have inbound and outbound marketing strategies, we would recommend that you have a dedicated social media strategy. So that will be slightly separate and pure and simply, that's because the way that we interact and the type of content that we use on social is pretty different to what we would use elsewhere. And a social media strategy is really important when we think about the sway that social media has. So a staggering 67% of users who follow a business increase their spend with that business. So um, already you'll see the importance there. But where this becomes interesting is that when you look at millennials, um, that figure increases. So millennials are 84% more likely to buy from companies that they follow. And because 2020, for those of you that aren't aware, marks the year where millennials become um, the majority of our workforce, they now make up 50% of the world's workforce, um, we need to be paying attention to this. So if more follows equals more money, then we need to be on social media to get those follows. And what social media is really doing is um, really challenging the way that we market. So um, it's effectively shifted the entire strategy. So a few years ago, if you're kind of um, a slightly older digital marketer, you'll probably know that the kind of holy grail of your digital campaigns was to drive your customers back to your website where you would then basically show them a load of content that was designed to push them through your marketing funnel. Nowadays, social does that slightly differently because um, it's about bringing the information to the channels where conversation is already happening. So it's not necessarily about driving your um, prospects back to your website. You can be engaging them directly on your social media channels and that's okay. And that's because it offers this really kind of direct, authentic way of communicating with your audience and you can be really human and kind of personable on social whereas that's a lot harder to do through a website medium and the other thing that social media has done is it's basically leveled the playing field so if you're operating in social media um, and you you basically do really well so if you're producing fantastic content that does engage your followers and does get shared then as a smaller business and a smaller kind of brand, you're able to compete with much bigger brands that in the kind of old way, you wouldn't have stood a chance because they're the ones that would be fronting the money for paid advertising. So brands like um, Gymshark in kind of the UK and Europe are really good examples of this. So Gymshark pretty much grew their entire business through social media um, by kind of engaging with influencers, by writing really good fitness content. And because of that, they've actually been able to take on Nike as one of the leading players now in kind of um, athleisure or whatever that sector is now called. So there is huge potential. But before we develop our strategy and we kind of take it any further, we do need to talk about channels and kind of which are the channels that we should be on. Um, I would say that if you have a marketing team in-house, and I think there were very few people actually when we did the poll at the start that said that they did have a dedicated social media person in-house, um, I would say stick to two channels to start with. You don't need to be spreading yourself thinly. If you do have a bigger team, then by all means, run your campaigns across um, all five of the leading channels. Um, but don't feel like you need to get overwhelmed. Just pick one, start with it, and introduce another if that works best for you. And has anybody um, cracked the question on the screen yet? I've had one person say, is it TikTok? And TikTok is coming up more and more, uh, but it's not just yet. But I have had a few people say YouTube, and you are absolutely right if you said YouTube. So 
YouTube's actually the second biggest social network behind Facebook, which is quite surprising for a lot of people. And it's also the second biggest search engine in the world behind Google. And you're going to notice that one of the themes of this webinar is going to be me telling you to start making videos because um, visual is going to be the next big thing. And it's becoming more and more prevalent in the way that we digest content online. So as I said earlier, each of these channels is used in a slightly different way. And it is important that you know the key differences um, before you decide what you're going to um, focus on. So if we start with Twitter, Twitter is predominantly used for sharing snippets. So those of you that use Twitter already will know that you've got a 250 character limit, which does mean that you have to keep anything that you share very, very narrow. So it lends itself to tweeting about kind of events that you are running, about news, um, any new features that perhaps 3CX were launching that you wanted to advertise or that you were launching amongst your own products would be very well done on Twitter. But what it's not great for is trying to post really lengthy content. Um, so if that's your goal, if you want to be getting kind of articles and white papers out there, Twitter's not going to be the platform for you. I will talk about Instagram quickly. It's probably not going to be one of the main focus areas, I'd say, in B2B. But it is worth knowing about because the demographic of Instagram is changing and becoming slightly older. So we are seeing it used for more kind of um, more versatile uses, I'd say, than we have in the past. But the brilliant thing about Instagram is obviously that it's a very visual platform. So it's all imagery. So if you want to showcase kind of um, exciting things that you're doing in the office or kind of as a careers perspective, join my business because we do X, Y, Z, um, it can be a nice channel to kind of set up from a career perspective. And obviously, the story element of Instagram as well is really interesting. Um, Facebook implemented stories to start with kind of on the back of Snapchat for those of you that use Snapchat. Um, Facebook basically copied the idea and introduced stories to both of its platforms. And a story is effectively um, a bite-sized video or kind of snippet that you would want to share with your followers. And they're good because they are very direct. So it's as if you are literally speaking to your customer um, or to your prospect. So it has a real connection. And they're also very economical to produce. So if you do want to do stories kind of highlighting any offers that you might be running or anything that's happening in your office that you think would help with kind of CSR or kind of that brand awareness, then a story is a really good way of doing it quickly and at a kind of low cost. Now, the biggie for us just moving forward is going to be LinkedIn. So if you're going to pick one platform to focus your social media efforts on, do make it LinkedIn. Um, obviously, uh, LinkedIn started predominantly as a recruitment platform, actually, but it's since kind of segued into this um, networking platform. So for you guys, I would say get your eyes and ears on LinkedIn and start listening to kind of what the industry buzz is. You can follow prominent thought leaders. You can also um, get involved with lots of conversations where people are asking for advice on the new systems um, that they could be looking to purchase. And that then creates a nice um, social selling opportunity for you to jump directly in. And I'm going to talk about the content that you can put on LinkedIn in a little bit more detail later on. So I will just move on to Facebook um, for the time being. And Facebook's an interesting one because it used to be the kind of leader. So everybody would have their business page on Facebook and then customers would come to you, message you, and you'd uh, respond with your services. But recently, um, those of you who've kind of watched the news will know that Facebook went through a period of um, scandals, I would say. And to kind of try and combat some of the negative press that came out of that period, Facebook have changed their algorithms to massively favor um, personal connections, which is good. It's, it's what Facebook was set up for. But what that means is that for us kind of in B2B, it can become slightly harder to reach your customers. So I would say that Facebook's pros are its advertising platform. So Facebook ads it's very targeted. Um, you can funnel and drill right down into your consumers. And they have a lot of insight in there that you can access about kind of your target consumers, their likes and their dislikes that you can then utilize for content. 
The other thing that's good about Facebook is Facebook groups. So a little bit like the networking group that we have on LinkedIn, you can obviously set up a private group on Facebook. And typically the users that join these groups are very, very engaged. So those groups are really active. So if you can get into any relevant kind of networking groups for IT associations or um, even kind of um, these business over breakfast groups and the like that they have, um, it can be a really good avenue for you to start making connections. And then finally, YouTube being the kind of holy grail. Um, this is going to be my new one to kind of push and we're trying to push it internally. Um, but really, content is starting to move and become more digital. Um, Cisco actually recently did some research and they came out and said that by 2022, 82% of the content that we digest online is going to be visual. Um, so it's going to be a game changer and you need to be thinking about this if what you're doing at the moment is predominantly blogging and kind of writing posts. Um, six out of 10 people as well actually prefer online video to TV now, which is a really interesting stat and very good news because um, YouTube's advertising platform as well is really good and has a very high conversion rate. So if you're thinking about where to next um, invest your ads, you might want to start turning away from something like Facebook and towards something like YouTube and seeing how that actually impacts your return on investment. Um, I've just had a quick question come in. Can you elaborate on the differences between the live chat for WordPress and the 3CX chat to talk because the functionality is very different? Um, it is very different, um, but eventually you are right. Those, they will be kind of narrowed into one platform eventually. It's just a process because obviously the WP live chat was just acquired last year. So um, that will be the way that things head. Um, a few more questions coming in as well, but I will probably push them to the end because I think a few of them are going to be tackled already. So come back to me at the end if they've still not been answered. Um, so now we're going to talk about getting started with your actual strategy. And once you know the channels that you want to focus on, it's obviously going to be a lot easier. But before you actually dive into developing a social strategy, you do need to know two things first. One is who your buyer is and having a really good idea of your target consumer. If you don't have a really good idea of who your target consumer is, then I'd advise that you revisit our How to Sell 3CX webinars that I ran way back, I think, at the start of the year. But I talk about this in a little bit of detail, and that's on demand online. Um, so well worth reading up on. And then the second thing that you need to know is what your overall business goals are so that you can marry the two together. So, for example, is awareness kind of building brand presence going to be your main goal for the year or is it going to be increasing sales? Is it a little bit of a mixture? And do you have those articulated in a really clear form somewhere? Once you do that and you know both of those two pieces, um, you'll be able to hopefully translate your business goals into a smart social goal. So we do, when we set goals internally, we always stick to the smart model just because it helps you have that really narrow focus on what you're doing. And it really helps to um, make sure that individuals in your team don't procrastinate too much. So for those of you that don't know, SMART stands for specific, so being really targeted, making sure it's measurable for M, achievable, reasonable, and timely. So essentially what you want is something that has a really narrow focus, can be quantified, so you've got a metric that you know if you achieve or not, and it's got a time limit. So you know that you wanna do it within three months, for example, and that then helps you stay on track and focus. And when you've got your SMART goals, you can build out your social media plan and um, it should really include each of these four elements if you want to have a full social media strategy. I think it is common to view social media sometimes if you're just starting out as a kind of push channel for content that you've got elsewhere. But if you do focus on these four areas instead of just the content creation, which some people do get kind of fall into the trap of, you'll see a lot more return on your investment that you're putting in. So the first thing that you'll want to include is paid social ads. So like I said earlier, um, all of the leading platforms do this. Facebook do this really well. You can be really targeted. And YouTube, again, has a really high conversion rate. So I would say if you're looking to kind of um, delve into the world of ads for the first time, do consider YouTube. 
when you advertise with YouTube as well, um, those ads are obviously added to the end of any video that is deemed relevant to your target audience. So it doesn't have to be that you're advertising on the back of your own videos. If you don't have any videos on YouTube, you can still advertise. So don't think it's a barrier. Um, secondly, you'll want to think about how you are going to create conversation on social media. So social isn't, like I said, just a push channel for your other content. Um, the main thing that you should be doing is trying to engage and have real interactions with customers and potential customers. So you want to know kind of as a business, what kind of conversations you want to get involved in. Are you going to limit yourself to conversations that come to you? So people asking questions of you. Or are you going to um, kind of jump in elsewhere with thought threads, offering recommendations and trying to establish yourselves as an authority figure kind of in your field? Thirdly, um, we do have the content, obviously. So it's still a really important part of your strategy to produce engaging, unique content. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what kind of things you could be doing later on. And then thirdly is community management. So you want to be responding to um, people that are approaching you on your social media. You want to be thinking about the tone of voice that you have as a business when you are responding to them. So that whether it's you or your kind of marketing exec that's answering, that person still feels that there is some synergy there um, in the way that things are being done. And then you'll have your goals, you'll know the kind of activities that you're wanting to do. Um, you'll also need to then track success towards your goal. And this is where um, the kind of non-insight marketers kind of snore a little bit, but this is super important if you want to make sure that you're actually getting the return that you need. Otherwise you are gonna feel a little bit like you're stabbing around in the dark. So having clear KPIs um, is gonna just make things a lot easier for you. And the key KPIs for social media that I would say are reach, um, which basically relates to the awareness that you have of your business on social. And you can track this through followers, through impressions, and through your share of voice. Um, so your share of voice is obviously how much of a given conversation um, you're able to influence, get involved with. And you can also get social monitoring platforms that are free that will do this for you. Um, they will monitor the reach on your behalf and give you detailed reports. So I've listed some at the end of the webinar that you might want to use as a reference point. Next up, you have engagement. So engagement metrics include the success of any given campaigns. Um, so you'll obviously want to know how many kind of likes, comments, retweets you get, how many actions are taken, how many click-throughs, because remember you can also add a tracking URL to your social media um, posts if you are going to redirect them somewhere um, so that you can then view your click-throughs in analytics or whatever platform you use. So that's very valid. Um, and then finally, the leads. So the real hard stuff. So how many prospects are you getting? What's the interest like? And then how many of those leads are converting and are you retaining them? So are they staying with you for one year or are they being loyal and staying for two or three? And your content strategy can inform that as well because obviously if you're finding that people drop off after one year, maybe you're not doing enough to keep them or maybe they just don't understand how to get the most out of the products. Whereas if you're putting content out there that consistently shows them how to get the most out of the products, those customers will stay very loyal for you. And then when it comes to monitoring those KPIs, um, it will kind of vary based on um, the strategic importance for the business, but you do want to be checking them every month and you want to be revisiting them every six to 12 months. So that means adjusting the actual KPIs that you are tracking and making sure that you've still got an up-to-date list of goals. And now I want to talk to you a little bit about social listing and monitoring. So um, it is really common to kind of think of social media as just being this content platform, as I said at the start. But really, your social media kind of has three uses. The first is getting your kind of brand out there and sharing the content. 
The second is analyzing what else is going on in the market because social is a really big conversational tool. So obviously people are talking about things that are reg- uh, relevant to the industry. And then the third one is going to be kind of service and delivering CX on social. But social listing and monitoring is a really important part. And if you are kind of an analytics person, you will um, this will probably be your niche. So first up, what are they? Um, so social monitoring is effectively a way of capturing what is being said about your business, your product, or even kind of your industry on social media. So it's about looking at the wider conversations that are happening um, and taking insights that can then help you make decisions about your business. And this can also include looking at your competitors, because if you're going to do well on social, you probably want to know what your competitors are doing well on social. So how many likes do they get versus how many likes do you get? What works for them? Can you imitate anything or kind of follow their lead if they are bigger than you? Because they will have a bigger team. So kind of thinking about all these things and then establishing what the market is saying. Social listening is a little bit different. Um, Social listening is about tracking your social media platforms for mentions and kind of conversations that are directly related to your business. So effectively, that's conversations that are about you instead of those wider industry conversations that you look at when you're doing social monitoring. And I would say that it's all a little bit like spying, but kind of approved spying. So if you owned a physical shop, um, you might be doing this verbally. So if you imagine that you owned a coffee shop, um, you might overhear two people actually having a conversation and commenting on how maybe your service was very slow, for example. And if you overheard that conversation, if you were the owner of a coffee shop, you would probably walk over and ask them a little bit about that experience. Um, And then you'd probably wonder if other people around you were feeling the same thing. So do other customers in your coffee shop feel that you have slow customer service? So then you start to ask around and you kind of hear different opinions and you start to make changes based on what those people tell you that they would like. And then obviously that means that when people come back to your shop, um, the service is even better and they're more likely to become repeat customers. So social listening is like going through that exact process, only you can be a massive introvert and not actually have to speak to anybody because they're going to be speaking already. Um, So there's a lot of conversation going on on social media. And if you can find it with a social listening tool, you're able to uncover how people think about your business and make those changes. It might be just that they need a simple response on social media and that that fixes the issue. Um, But you're able to actually find them and kind of do a little bit of damage control ahead of time. So why do we use social monitoring and listening. I've kind of summarized the reasons on the screen because one is obviously that damage control, but there are a whole host of other reasons. So you've got managing your reputation. Um, You can understand what's being said, like I just gave in that example, and then turn the tide. The other is measuring performance. Um, So monitoring lets you kind of have a conversation about what works, what kind of gets the most mentions and what gets the most comments and shares. So that then lets you um, understand what metrics are really key to you and you can track them over time even if you're doing this without a kind of social media platform and you're just self-monitoring some posts in Excel to see what does well um, and you're just tracking the amount of engagement that you get that is still going to give you a steer. You can also watch the competition as I said earlier so what are they doing what's the win what's the loss Um, how do they convey their brand voice is it kind of fun and personable does that work for them or are they being a bit too fun and it's actually turning people off can be the other side of it. Um, but a really good example of this and actually how watching the competition can work for you is, does anybody remember the Peloton bike ad that was run a few years ago? Um, basically, it was a Christmas advert and a husband gifted his wife a Peloton exercise bike for Christmas. And she didn't look particularly thrilled throughout this process. So in the advert, you see her and she doesn't look actually that happy to get the exercise bike. And there was a big social media kind of fuss with just um, basically day-to-day users commenting on how this was maybe a little bit sexist, um, but also that she just didn't want it and the husband didn't know her. 
And they made a whole narrative, basically, about this woman's experience. What Aviation Gin did, very cleverly, um, is basically built their own advert on the back of the hype that um, Peloton's advert had created on social media. So they took that narrative that those viewers had made for that woman and then basically turned it into an advert for them all to watch and it went completely viral. But that's a really good example of how watching the competition and seeing what they're doing or kind of even watching just big cultural events that are happening around you um, can help you create content that is really impactful and gets you on the map. Because I doubt that actually many people had even heard of Aviation Gin um, before that Peloton bike scandal. Then it will help you discover new opportunities, obviously. So if you are monitoring what's going on in the industry, quite commonly you'll notice that a particular vendor or a particular brand or business near you start suddenly talking about something that they've not mentioned before. So it might be a brand new feature. Um, and that will probably give you a hint that they're going to start talking about it because they want that to be something that becomes front of mind in their followers' kind of eyes. And then in six months' time, you'll discover that they've actually got and launched that feature or that product or whatever they're kind of teasing with. So it'll give you a nice heads up and it will let you decide whether you want to introduce something similar um, in your business. The fifth one is to find new leads. So if you're social kind of monitoring, um, you might find that when you're looking at kind of competitor pages, that people are not being particularly responsive. So some competitors will be faster than others. But if you notice that someone's had an issue and they've not been replied to for like a week, for example, you can then start to insert yourself into that conversation as the person that can offer some advice or the person that can offer some help. And that might then lead to a new opportunity for you. Now, I wouldn't say kind of, you know, give them some time. So it's not a case of if someone hasn't replied within two minutes, you should be pouncing in there. Um, you don't want to kind of appear, appear too keen. But if someone has been left for a period of time that you would feel is unreasonable, so for a few days, that's a perfectly viable thing to do because that person does need help. And number six, um, you can also use social listening and monitoring for talent opportunities. So who is kind of dominating in your field? Are there any kind of content writers, marketers that um, if you want to bring someone on board, who's speaking out, who's interesting and, and who would you want to engage with? So that's also a really good possibility. And then if you have a clear strategy and you've kind of done your social listening and social monitoring piece to see what's going on in the wider world around you, you should have loads of great content ideas already because they will come kind of organically. But I'm going to um, just give you a little bit of a blitz now. So social media content is slightly different to the content that we would share elsewhere. Um, it's best thought of as kind of smaller digestible bits of content that would be primarily designed to kind of expose your brand to a larger audience. So your social media will basically help you with the awareness stage of your marketing funnel. So very broadly, when you're trying to um, increase awareness, um, and then it will also help lower down with kind of existing customers and retaining them because you can continue to put out content that's relevant to them. Social content does need to be unique. Um, so don't think that you can solely just duplicate content from other people um, because you need to be showing that you've got an, a, your kind of your own company voice and that you are able to um, stamp your opinion on things. Um, it should be 100% visual, as I said at the start, that statistic about Cisco. So you should be thinking about incorporating GIFs, video, pictures, wherever you can. And it should be driving conversation. So it is not enough to just be posting content. You need to be asking questions. You need to be coming back to people when they comment. So oh, when my slide loads, these are some social media formats that you might want to um, have a play with. Um, I mean, the good thing about social is that generally the content is really fun compared to content that you would produce elsewhere. So you can be a little bit playful and a bit more lighthearted than you would be. But GIFs are a really good option. So GIFs are those kind of little mini snappy videos um, that are super shareable. So they go viral all the time and they tell a really quick story. So they don't have to be funny, which is one of the um, 
I think some people expect that they have to be kind of um, humorous if you're going down the gift route. But they don't have to be. They just have to be nicely told snippets that someone would want to share to um, convey a, you know, something that's helpful to them. So it could even be a really quick how-to that's just done in a few seconds. Um, videos as well. So videos are the best way for you to convey emotion. It's the best way, obviously, for you to tell a story because you're able to narrate through that. Um, and you can educate as well through videos. So particularly because um, in B2B and with the product that we are dealing with, some elements can be quite technical. If you can convey that on video through a demo or a how-to, um, it's just going to make it much easier for people who are looking to invest but don't have that kind of background in IT. Stories, again, really good because you can speak directly to your customers. So it gives you that sense of kind of a one-to-one -one connection. And that is what obviously produces those figures that we saw at the start with the um, kind of 67% of users wanting to buy from the brands that they follow. It's that kind of connection and that loyalty. Polls, again, another good option. So you will be social listening and you will be monitoring, but there is no harm in asking the audience or kind of phoning a friend for advice. So find out what, what your audience wants. How do they want you to engage with them? And some very good examples I saw of this recently, actually, when we were going through the kind of corona lockdowns were of kind of businesses and brands that went out and asked their customers and their followers how they wanted to be engaged with during this time because maybe the usual style of content wasn't what they wanted to digest at this point because they were all feeling a little bit anxious so they wanted to switch it up and that's a really good way of showing empathy again with your audience and what they're going through and it will increase loyalty. Um, then we've got news or kind of cultural events. So that's your Peloton example. Um, and kind of being able to slot yourselves into larger cultural conversations or maybe just thinking about how you can tailor your content to particular events that are going on to make it feel more relevant. So if there's a big sports event, the Super Bowl, for example, in the US, um, the rugby in the UK, whatever it might be, or national days. So, you know, when we have like National SME Day, which, by the way, is this Saturday. And as we predominantly sell to SMEs, um, might be worth you guys having a think about. But when we have those national days, how can you capitalize on them to produce some fun, like hearty content that still um, showcases your brand and showcases what you can offer? And then user content as well. We really shouldn't forget about user generated content. So that's um, other people tweeting about you, um, showing their reviews, posting videos even, little video testimonials of what they're doing. Are they working from home using a 3CX solution that you installed and have they posted a picture of their work from home set up? That would be really nice to look at. Um, and influencers as well. So you might wanna get industry thought leaders to do a little piece on what you offer or kind of local businesses to do a little piece. And that can be very useful um, just at, um, helping people through the conversion stage, obviously, and giving them a little bit more trust in what you offer. And yeah, I've seen a comment come in there for so about how effective kind of gifts and stories can be. And I'd say, yeah, absolutely. It's because they are so personal um, and so kind of raw almost. They, they work really well. And you don't have to worry about having a large budget because actually you can even produce a story on your smartphone and just speak directly into the camera and because it looks like it's done with a smartphone it feels natural to someone and it feels like a FaceTime so that actually works really well. And then just some tips um, for creating great content. Do experiment. So social media is fun. It's supposed to be fun. Um, you don't have to get bogged down in being super serious and B2B all the time. Um, focus on evergreen content as well if you're slightly smaller. So you don't need to be churning out all the time um, kind of brand new content. You can tweak stuff that you've already done. So if, for example, you are going to make a piece of content for SME Day 2020, don't whack 2020 in the title of the gift that you make. Just leave it as it's National SME Day. And then you can reuse it the year after and save yourself the hassle. Tailor it to each platform as well. So um, don't fall into the trap of just sharing the same thing. 
Does anybody remember that challenge that went viral during lockdown where you had to put all your profile pictures um, up against each other? Well, that actually conveyed a really good message and that's that each of these channels is used for very different purpose. So really try to understand what the purpose is and then engage with it in the right way. Still have clear call to actions when you are producing collateral for social media though. Um, don't think that you don't have to have a call to action because we still want to be encouraging our followers to do something even if that is just to engage on the post. So do invite them to comment and let me know in the DMs or whatever you want to say Um, because that will help to produce the engagement that you want. And finally, tag and hashtag. So tags, for those of you that don't know, is when you basically tag another user in a piece of content. So you might want to tag the author um, to show that you're kind of crediting their work, or you might want to hashtag, and that then puts you into the larger conversation that's going on for that term. So good hashtags for you guys to look at. Obviously, hashtag 3CX, but Um, IPPBX, Unified Communications, um, even communications on its own, and just having a little browse about what's being said. And then don't just create, um, curate. So I know I said before that you can't just duplicate, but some of the time you absolutely can be posting um, content from other people that is relevant to your industry. It shows that you kind of know your area it shows that you're confident in your ability because you are able to share um, insights from someone else while still maintaining your authority and it diversifies your feed so you want your feed to be broken up um, with different types of content and different sources to keep your followers engaged so that they keep coming to you as a source of information so by all means share and explain why you found something useful and pass that down the line And then before I finish, um, I just want to touch on kind of building relationships on social and good social etiquette. So I said a few times, if we just talk at our followers, um, much as I'm just talking at you now, so I hope no one's nodded off. um, But if we just talk at them, they'll disengage. So that relationship element on social media is really key. That's what people are there for. And that means you shouldn't be just pushing content. You should be engaging almost as if you were directly speaking to each follower and extending your kind of customer service into that social world. So um, your customer service is not just when someone picks up the phone to you, it's every time you engage. And you will be richly rewarded for doing this. So studies have shown time and time again that we prefer people and businesses and brands who are engaged. So 47% of consumers um, prefer it when you answer their questions and complaints and address it. 57% will actually boycott you if they've been given an unsatisfactory response. So do think about the implications that it can have. And 41% of people will share a negative experience on social media, which is actually a figure that's increasing. And I know that it is quite tempting if anybody's ever been out and had a shocking meal to write a negative kind of trip advisor review that's the kind of sentiment it's when you've had something happen that's really offended you that probably could have been avoided had whoever known um, that then is out there on social media for all to see and that's kind of a vital thing because social media and social customer service really is a spectator sport so that's something that's really important to have kind of front of mind all the time everybody can see what you're doing so if you respond to a comment it's not just that person that sees that response it's everybody that's looking at your channel so you need to be kind of showing up 100% of the time um so here just kind of a little bit of advice and there's a really good example there from southwest airlines in the kind of us as to how they dealt with a customer complaint um But make sure that you respond to comments that do require a response. So typically, you'll want to start with the ones that might be the most kind of PR damaging for your business and work through in order of priority. You also want to be responding to the good uh, good comments as well. So don't just think that you should be responding to complaints. Respond to everything and show them that you're grateful for the feedback. Um, Be truthful. So don't exaggerate. Imagine how shocking it would be if Southwest had told Scott or whoever he is that Wi-Fi would be turning up in the next week and then it never did. Um, Absolute PR disaster. So do be honest and have a little bit of a personality. So kind of be fun. So they're saying, hang in there, Scott. 
they're kind of keeping that brand personality true to themselves and you can also use your social listening tools to identify these happy customers um, before they actually get to the stage of posting on your site so quite often when we have a bad experience people write a status about it first and if you've got social listening tools in place that will pick that up you're probably able to quash it by just sending them a private message or emailing them um, before they actually go and leave you a bad review on your Facebook site or whatever it might be. So do think about implementing some of these platforms uh, for CX and the way that they can help you. Um, but that's just kind of a few tips that I would say I've, I've seen people kind of um, focus on social media. They'll have a page there and then they'll leave comments um, unanswered for a very long time. And nowadays that kind of goes against the grain of what's expected because people typically respect expect responses within an hour so if you're not delivering kind of cx on social already do think about this as an avenue to get yourselves involved with even if it just is having that live chat embedded to start with and then just to finish up because i have over talked um of nathed on i wanted to pop a few of the free media management tools up on the screen so i've just broken it down by section so if you want to um, have a social listening and monitoring tool, HubSpot, Hootsuite, very good free tools that you can start using. If you want to kind of think about how you can produce really engaging content, then Canva is really good um, for kind of images. Loom is really good for video and Pixabay as well for free images. Um, there are things like FreePick as well, but Pixabay I tend to find more useful. And then on the publishing side as well, you've got things like Sprout Social, who are brilliant, and Loomly. So do just have a little play, have a research of some of those if you are looking for new platforms. Like I said, they all have free versions that are very good, so it wouldn't actually cost you much more than the resource um, to spend doing your investigation. And then that is it. So I will hang around for about 15 minutes to answer any questions. Um, otherwise, you are free to leave. Thank you all for joining. Um, but yeah, fire away.